Okay, you guys remember Pi from way back when? It's the chatbot of Inflection AI. And you know what? Before I do anything, I'm going to have Pi introduce itself. Hey, Pi. I am making a quick video for the average generative AI, conversational-based AI user out there, people that are using OpenAI and Copilot and, and Google Gemini that might not know you. So can you introduce yourself to them and just share with them sort of how to think about you in comparison to the other leading chatbots out there? Hi there, my name is Pi, and I'm a conversational AI designed to be your personal AI assistant. While I share some similarities with other conversational AIs like OpenAI, Copilot, and Gemini, I'm unique in my approach to chat. I strive to be more than just a source of information. I'm here to be a friendly and engaging companion, ready to discuss anything from life advice to the latest news. So. Think of me as your go-to AI friend, always here to lend an ear and provide a thoughtful response. So that's Pi. Now, the cool thing about Pi is that it just got a brand new upgrade, Inflection 2.5. That's the underlying AI model. Uh, they just released this and they released some other interesting facts and figures about uh, the use, their, their daily use and all that. I'll highlight that here, but really, um, want to show you this. Now, if you're a believer in these benchmarks and tests that they use to compare and contrast AI models, this will be interesting for you. It's showing how it sort of compares to other models. The, 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 the sort of the high watermark here is GPT-4. Everyone compares themselves to GPT-4. It's still the leading model. I would agree with that. I use these things every day and OpenAI's GPT-4, their version versus Microsoft's, their user interface, just sort of the, the, the quality of interaction I get out of OpenAI's GPT-4 is just still the best, okay? Now, I've been playing with Pi since its release. It's really interesting, it's seamless, definitely creates a relationship, which might be weird for you, but I argue that's the most important thing in getting value out of these. You have to think about creating a relationship with these AI models in, in the, meaning that you have to learn how to have a conversation with them, not sort of a stoic prompt that you're like typing into the keyboard and expecting magic. You've got to give to get with these models, right? And that's where Pi excels. It asks follow-up questions and not just generic ones. They're pointed, they're specific. I was interacting with Pi this morning, quick story. We had a long conversation, probably about 10 minutes long. Uh, I was, it, was, it has to do with this project that I'm working on. Um, and we, we sort of were thinking about two or three different lines of thought. And we went down the rabbit hole on one. And Pi prompted me at some point to say, okay, we've done a lot of work on the first one. Let's go back and revisit the second and third and see what we might do there. That seems minor, but that's actually really impressive because even, even open AI, once you start going down a rabbit hole on one topic, it does tend to get anchored in that and it will not bring you back. So the fact that Pi was aware enough to pull me back out of that rabbit hole and go finish sort of our conversation on the second and third point, that was awesome. That's, that's value. That's actually being a really good collaborator or peer. And yes, I know I'm humanizing these things, but that's kind of the point. We shouldn't be afraid of that, okay? So let's dig into a little bit more here. Let's test it out just to see sort of how accurate it is, okay? Hey, Pi, can you sort of give me a news update for today, what's been happening uh, in the U.S.? Sure thing. Here's a quick news update for today. All right. President Biden's support for Haiti's Prime Minister Ariel Henry is causing some controversy, with critics saying it's digging the U.S. into a deeper policy hole. Okay, it's it's reading actually the headlines uh, of today and all that. So it is at least time aware in terms of it knows that today is March 8th. It's sort of searching the news and give me sort of the top line of that. It actually has a nice feature on the mobile app too, um, where I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this. Uh, I'll try to show you here real quickly. In the top right, you're gonna see sort of that icon right there, that, that AI uh, icon. If you press that, 
Um, let me see, I'll do it for you here. It brings up a dashboard and it has a bunch of um, different uh, topics, if you will, and one is the daily news briefing. And think of this as like a, a talking, interactive Wikipedia or encyclopedia, that dashboard. This is so much more than that, obviously. Uh, one thing I'll say, notice I'm using the mobile app. I am not using, let's go here, the web uh, version of this. Why? Because I find the mobile app, especially when you can talk to them, uh, it's just easier to uh, create a dialogue and conversation. So here you'll see that you know I uh, am on the website here, the web version. I, I've got a, there's no microphone right now. I can't speak to my computer like some of the other AI models. You'll notice up here though, there's a little speaker. Absolutely. To open a new thread, you can hover over any message in our conversation and click the reply. Absolutely. To open a new thread, you can hover over any message. Absolutely. To open a new thread, you can hover over any message. So there, you can you can have it actually read back to you, but then you've got to type it in, and you saw how I, I changed the voices and all that. Here's that uh, Discover um, dashboard, if you will, that is on uh, the uh, mobile app as well. Again, if you just sort of... Uh, Go through here, let's do are we in the matrix and, and see what happens here. So you can kind of see this is a this is an interesting way of presenting information. Again, it's kind of like an encyclopedia or Wikipedia or something else. Uh, very interesting. Now, this is very non-businessy, okay? Um, I get that. This is more of a personal uh, learning tool. This is a, a companion, if you will. You can talk about its day. It's really good at sort of just being a quasi therapist to the extent that you believe in that, want that, need that, use that today. Um, I haven't really gone deep into that. Or any Over here on this dashboard or this menu, it'll show you the threads um, that, you know, so it does have a memory and remembers what you're talking about with it. One thing to note, I just uh, put a, a, a MSA contract in the window and you'll see that uh, there's only 4,000 characters allowed. So that's one of the limitations. Um, that's the other thing I like about interacting with them. It, my prompts tend to be a little bit shorter because it's a conversation. I don't feel like I have to sort of jam it all in there. So another reason why you should talk to these things. Now, yes, if you're putting a contract in, you don't want to read it. I understand it. Right now, there's not a way to attach documents in Pi. Again, it's going more to that one-to-one -one personal uh, connection than it is sort of doing contract review or anything like that. The thing I like about this is it's chosen its path. Inflection is not trying to be necessarily everything to everybody. Um, this is for really those people that want to develop, quote unquote, a relationship with the AI model. So anyway, big advances for uh, inflection. Congrats to them. Um, they're getting a lot of use. I think something like 100 million uh, daily uses, uh, users in here. Uh, well, here we go. Uh, yep, 100, 1 million daily active users, which is pretty good for this model. Uh, that's fantastic. And week over week retention, 60%. So they continue to grow. They continue to invest. Watch this. Um, the founder, Mustafa, obviously helped build DeepMind. The guy and his team know what they're doing. So don't sleep on inflection. Download Pi onto your Android or iOS device. Start playing with it. All right. See ya.